everyone. Oh, so we we had uh, we had not the best day. We go ahead and look at uh, the client. We we had some losses today. We had some we had some victories. We did, but uh, mo mostly kind of rough day for us. But that's all right. Not too bad. Those happen time to time again. Um, what we need to do is make sure that we learn from those mistakes, right? And one of the champions that we brought out today that we hadn't played, at least not in mid lane for a while, was Malzahar. I hadn't played a Malzahar game mid for quite some time. And as you can see, the game kind of spiraled out of control. It ended pretty early on. Very one-sided. It happens. Um, the things that my initial impressions with this game are is... Uh, in lane, I didn't feel like I was very effective. I was up against an Azir. I didn't... I, I could mostly cover my own minions and mostly keep that lane equalized. Azir couldn't shove me in. As, as Azir's are wont to do sometimes, he couldn't quite make that happen. So that was all right. That was all right. But I didn't feel any opportunity to make plays on him. I couldn't harass him because he's so long range. It's hard for me, even if I'm bouncing my E, the space aids, from minion to minion and trying to get it to bounce to him last, I just can't make it happen. The Void Swarm, the little Voidlings I can summon, it was impossible to get them anywhere near him. He would just clear them before they could get to him and really start to multiply and swarm. So they weren't really effective. It was just free gold for him. And my silence, my Q, not the longest ranged ability in the game. And again, since he's playing so far back, he basically has his own front line with his soldiers. I just it's it's nearly felt impossible for me to do anything against him. So the answer in those situations of what I'm supposed to do is obviously Rome. Now, as you'll notice, we had a Nasus in the game. Nasus is a very key target. Zai and Rakan are in the game as the bot lane for the enemy side. So they have a lot of synergy, and theoretically that makes them a very strong lane and a hard lane to gank. However, as the game was played out, we'll see that Nasus sort of started to snowball on his own. He got a little bit of, of a lead there that started to get ahead. And as a Cho'Gath, you know, if you start falling behind to a Nasus, you start to lose some of your only tools to really kind of bully him by shoving in the wave and then making roams yourself. So that's that's not the most ideal lane for me to gank, even though it would still be possible. Cho has really good setup. If you can land the Q to knock him up and then silence him, then we can chain some good CC, make a kill happen. Still was possible top. Was possible that I could have turned that lane around. Didn't roam. Didn't roam there. Tried to go bot a couple times, just couldn't make it happen. And I think that that's, that's wrong. I think there were ways I could have made that happen. And even if top lane was a lost cause, which I don't think it necessarily was, we'll see when we go through the replay. But even if it was, this bot lane, at the end of the game, this Zaya was 1-0-6 and, and only had one item completed with upgraded boots. She was not insane. If I had gone bot and I had actually been able to get my ult off on her, she didn't preemptively dodge it. Or even if she did, I could just like flash and then ult afterwards. There would have been opportunities there to get our Vayne going, and if Vayne gets going, she can handle Nasus that equalizes things, and we have a real shot at this. So without any further ado, that's my initial impressions on the game. Let's get into the replay, see how the game worked out in and of itself, and review what we could have done better. Because this is a tough one, you know? It's, all, it's always tough when you lose, you, you lose a few games that day, um, and then you end on a loss that's pretty tough, but... I feel the potential, man. I felt it. One of the things that we definitely did wrong as well that game was we would ult as Malzahar. And this is where you're going to see the rest. I, I'm, my head's going to just like go like this. We're going hands in the air when this happens. And it will happen at least like two or three times this game. Because I just cancel my ult way too soon. I just, I start moving again. I break my own channel. It's just, it's, that's bad. That could have definitely been done better. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt. Damn it. Ooh, hold on, let's uh, get back into. Dust it off. There we go. Okay, so pretty normal start from what I remember. Um, but the only thing that was kind of strange was Nasus started coin, which I don't know about you guys, but I haven't seen the Nasus coin meta. Um, I, I guess it's because Nasus really wants to get extra mana regen. Because in lane, all Nasus cares about is being able to Q farm. And he's really mana hungry in the early stages of the game, so I suppose this makes sense. 
I, I'm, you're probably not going to get much out of the passive, but that's probably not the point of this. The extra cooldown reduction on it is nice too because you get to queue all the time. We're going to move away from Lulu for a moment just because that laugh is so obnoxious. <laughs> um, but you know, I guess that kind of makes sense. It, it is a non-standard star that doesn't provide him with as much combat stats. So that might have made him even more vulnerable to gank early on. Should have all been little keys to me to roam early, even before I had six. I should be roaming there. Cho'Gath has enough CC to where if he lands it, we can make that kill happen. So I'm going to lane here. Nothing too special about the lane at the start. Try and get the uh, E off, but early level does so little damage. Didn't quite get the bounce working properly. Whatever, it happens. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because our laning phase is not that notable, you know? Try to start working it down. Still rank 1 E, not the best. Whatever. Getting the last hits, for the most part. I think we missed one there, but that's not a big deal. We just focus on a little bit here. And that's the most that our Void Swarm is really useful for, is stopping the wave from shoving any further back. It helps a little bit to actually shove the target, but as you'll see, the Sand Soldier's there. They just knock out that Voidling so quickly. It's just free gold for his ear. So, I'm looking around trying to position um, more topside, because I, I see the pings come out that uh, Noon is up here, so I was positioning here to tr try and look for a pincer, but he had backed off so quickly, I was like, okay, well, now the gank's on me, <laughs> so I need to back off. Good, good positioning overall, just to remain safe here. Try and stay in range of farming, try and get as much vision as I can. As we'll notice, I can't actually see him from this position, but I have, I'm trying to work as much as I can to give Lee some support there. We don't know where Nunu is. After I get this wave clear, I'm seeing that, like, how hard Lee Sin has, even if Nunu isn't here anymore, he's screwed up his own jungle path just because he has to not die to Nunu. So I want to be able to give Lee Sin a little bit more flexibility in getting this jungle cleared out how he wants to, a little more optimally. Come throw down a ward above red. Great. You know Nunu's not there, it's safe for Lee Sin to pick up the red. He does go. I go back to lane. I think I only missed like a minion to throw that down. It's fine. So we do this on time to do. Throw on the Void Swarm to sense the soldiers are down. And actually get a little bit of more value out of it. Push them out. First kill happens top. You know, not that big of a deal, but. Go here. Looking to make something happen. Right? On to. Let's actually keep a close eye on this because I think I could have played this better. So I'm trying to get some damage on a Nunu to start things off. Don't think he's going to be the target we go on, but he's wearing that blue buff, so yeah, I'm a little, little thirsty for that. So if I can get free damage onto him, I'll take it. As soon as Azir comes into range, I'll start repositioning to land the Q. He does flash it, but that's flash down, so we're going to get the E on him. I flash ignite to make sure this is enough to kill him and throw down the poison. Is enough to kill him. Very close, but it ends up working out. Unfortunately, Lucin does die to the snowball. Instead of going back with him here, I think what was happening in my head with walking this far back was I wanted to give him a safeguard target, but as we'll notice, oh, pretty close. Come on. So as we can see, once this breaks down, all the action happens. Right here, staying back, boom, there's safeguard. From right here, I don't need to move at all, right? I'm going to win this trade with Nunu because I already have void lanes up. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what my uh, cooldown is. Uh, cooldowns are right now, but nonetheless, I should be able to win this with uh, Nunu, because I have Voidlings already swarming, I'm a level ahead of him, and Lee Sin's going to make it out alright, so he, he doesn't have any red buff, theoretically, right, we know Lee, that Lee doesn't make it out, right here, we lose vision in the brush, 
This is time that the Voidlings could have been auto-attacking him and swarming a bit more. You'll see that they have to kind of weirdly kite there because they keep like dodging in and out of vision and then needing a gap close afterwards because they don't have the AI. Starting to throw my new cooldowns on again. Not getting too much damage. Do force him to spike just to make sure he controls it, but probably could have just backed off there um, and not had much come of it. But equally, I could have just stayed forward in how aggressively I positioned. Maybe would have given Nunu second, like a pause for just a second even, so Lisa and could have got out of there, and I could have got some more free damage onto Nunu. So right here, instead of coming into lane with this much health, wouldn't be that much of a difference, but maybe that, maybe that much health would be gone. And we'll notice, I get a lot of significant harass on him once he comes in lane trying to get all these minions. You know, sure, he's gonna get the uh, heals off, but it's fairly low, you know. He has to be concerned about me getting six. Though he did just see me level up in that fight, so if he was paying attention, he shouldn't be that concerned. But look at how low he is, you know? He would be like that low. And not able. He would be zoned away from him. He might have missed that level. Maybe a few less gold comes. Very marginal there. But it's early in the game. The marginal things early on make a big difference. So. Overall, okay play. Could have gone better for us, but that's just unfortunate, I think, overall. I don't know if you guys want to think about that overall, but... <laughs> um, we're going back in the lane here. We send gets his own top spot, wonderful. And the Voidlings are already in my shield. My shield saved me a lot of the HP more than anything else against uh, Azir. Here, I get the good win. It's another way the Voidlings are actually useful this game, they can hold the position for me. We managed to get the clear on this and put it down some other way. Now that's what I call a value. Not as necessary because I have blue, but always helps, you know, keep the cooldowns up for stuff like this. Now I'm just running at him. Honestly, Azir should probably just summon a soldier, like right here, and dash to it. He's playing a little greedy by not spending that mana and cooldown. And I do just barely get in range. He's in, comes in. Unfortunately, can't quite get the ult off. It does look like I was wondering if he had enough uh, energy for this. It looks like he does. He just couldn't didn't feel confident in the position. So, oh well. Maybe that's enough to kill him. Maybe it's not. But whatever. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter too much. Didn't burn any significant summoners on our side. In a fairly like favorable trade in HP. Seeing the recon over here, clearing the uh, ward out or battling over vision, whichever it was. Rotate over, give Lee some little coverage back out. Hang over safely. Trying to, again, give as much vision down this alleyway as possible so Lee Sin feels confident in his jungle. He's sitting here, controlling the wave. Again, position to the bottom side of Lee Sin. Be easy to rotate to him if he can back up. Trying different things here. Starting the uh, the E. What's the Melissa Regions? Probably should call it that, not Space Aids, but it's Space Aids. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, trying to start that on the Caster Minions instead. I rotate over here to try and help um, see if like we can get a gank off bottom or. Uh, get some vision down on Baron, or Dragon, Drake, I should say. Unfortunately, they already took it. It's a new new, so we're not going to have much chance to stop him. Come here to try and get the safeguard. He decides to ult away. Yeah, that's both work. Ult's a little bit safer, so. Good play. Might as well play safe. He was plenty low, so. Rotate back on over the mid. Oh. 
very clear in me. I'm in trouble. You might even just age me because of that, but not a big deal. Use the uh, Void Swarm to tank. Look top. Can't really find a way to make it work, it doesn't seem like it. Look out falls to get the. Um, that. Void Swarm doesn't work as strong as the Void Swarm, so we can't get the monster with it. Chill got those, get that. Hopefully that helps him in top. Still got those working terribly in top. Certainly uh, better than me. <laughs> Happy to hand that one over. I'm looking bot. I noticed that a ward was thrown down by Rakan in this bush. So I was thinking, okay, if they play too aggressively going forward here, trying to get some harass damage while they're at turret, then I'll just walk through it anyway, and I'll be close enough to just flash ult, maybe get a kill there. But then this gives them even additional warning, so I just decide, alright, let's just clear the control ward, rotate back to lane, maybe look another day. We actually do get vision that they were all recalling, so perfect. Try not to turret. Not well, working out the best, but we do get most of that. Um, something I'm noticing is that my mana this game is always fairly high. So it might be correct to try and use my Q to shove the wave out more aggressively than I am. Just to maintain lane control. Which I'm not doing, and then I get chunked out like this, which means I lose lane control even harder. So, that's not good. That's not bad. I'm not sitting in the turf, and then it's fairly abysmal. If I have this one, I'm just like one or two of those. Nonetheless, it feels bad. <laughs> so, Azir gets the roam off there. Because he's applied so much pressure to me, and pinned me to last hitting under turret. He just has so much time to roam. All I can really do is ping it out, which I did, but, you know, pinging only does so much. It doesn't give them additional MR <laughs> and armor or move speed to run away from the gank. And I try and come back here and shove the wave as quickly as I can to open up an opportunity to gank bottom in response because, as we'll see, their bot lane is at our turret. But our bot lane just backed. So I don't really have the best opportunity to go gank bottom. And since our top lane died, there's not really much to do on the map. Which at the end of the day, is just unfortunate timing. So I decide to back so I can match Azir's back. Give myself a Morel and Omicon. It's fine. Um, it's good against Nunu, it's good against Nasus, so it's good against Zaya, depending on if she builds more skill. I don't think she does in this game memory serves, but unless it's overall a fairly decent item for us this game. Rotate down here, because it looks like that's where the action is happening. Rotate back to me, because it looks like nothing really came to it. Trying to get control of wave again. Watch this moment. Ooh, that's perfect. Come back to me, perfect. So again, I was trying something a little different here. Instead of just starting it at the front, the Malefic Visions, I decided to try and start it on a caster minion here. As, you, as you'll note with my graceful position as Malzahar right now. <laughs> uh, and I do get it, but I take so much harass from that. I even secure it with a Q, so I'm not entirely sure that it's worth taking a chunk of harassment like that. And you'll note it didn't even, it's not strong enough to kill 100 0, the casters in the back line. So, at least at this point in the game, it's not worth doing. I don't think. We do luckily get the bounce there. Take a little bit more poke on the way out, which is unfortunate. They're rotating over. Trying to zone them away. Trying to get out of the flash to get out. And this is one of the times where I cancel. But it's like, Nunu flashed anyway. I'm dead. You know, there's nothing I can do about that one. That was a mistake, but I don't think it mattered in the grand scheme of things. Unfortunately, me dying right then, 
means that they're able to uh, contest or take any contestable and just knock it away. So they get that dragon free and it is an inferno group. So, eh, not the best for us. It's unfortunate. Good rotations and pressures by the blue team there to try and look for picks. And they actually did get two picks before that dragon started, which just made it impossible to even pick the best game. I do get to shove out mid. I try and look bot, but like they just left vision. So not much I can do there. Come back mid. Maybe I could have thrown the top instead. Let me finish this wave up. Try and start looking top. But I'm gonna get pressured really hard, so I don't want to lose and just drop this curve. The Zier does take it down fairly quickly because he's able to attack me. And then when I see the full rotation of people coming in, I'm like, okay, well, I gotta stay here and try and do something. Fortunately, my wave is not that great. But I'm, I have to get in the nearby city to drop the heat. And he just bounces that. Not the best. I do cancel my aunt slightly early here. Maybe if I had held him a little bit longer, Azir just dies there. I'm, I'm fairly confident in saying Azir dies there 100% of the time if I just hold that R. If I just hold that ultimate. But instead, he gets a return kill on me. I like try and step forward to get my E on him. And then he gets to do fancy plays where he says he's sin and his turret does work. And now it's just abysmal. So I think that's probably the main moment where I made a mistake. And it's just a that's just a thing about not having played Mazahar in a while, especially in the And I shut down. So we got to put some work there. Uh, I just need to hold the R. I just need to really confidently open it. And just chill with it, you know? I was in a good position. Let's actually review that one more time, because it looks like that's pretty much <laughs> This was a fairly uneventful one. So we're walking the pressure here. And this is great. She makes him abundant. So, what I could have done instead You'll note that none of these other abilities were on cooldown. What I could have done instead, is as soon as I wasn't expecting her to polymorph, which I probably should have been expecting. But instead of just walking forward and trying to hold them, I should be a little bit more choosy with my ult. And I'm looking to get the Q off, right? So I do get the Q off. But that's it. Especially since he became a bunny, and he's silenced. Like, both of those, either of those would be good enough. But, I, I should throw down the Malefic Visions on him. I should summon a Void Swarm, right here. Ah, I can click on my draw tool. Right here, to start hitting him and multiplying. And, I have my Combat Summoner Ignite available. Which, I am i think I'm actually too far out of range to even use. Because I ulted from the very maximum range. And the range on my ultimate is slightly more than the range on Ignite is. So it's I understand why I did this. Because I, I didn't want to risk dying to the soldier here. And I just wanted to hold him in place for Vayne and Lulu to do their thing. But I think I could have played this better if I had... Anticipated that my phone worked a little better. And I, I'm almost certain we could have done a kill on him if I didn't uh, cancel my phone. So that's unfortunate. So I got a ward there. I'm looking for the team forward, or the control ward, pretty defensively there, because I, I just think we need to play rather defensively at this point. I was anticipating my uh, board swarm to multiply a little bit quicker there against the jungle, and it didn't, so I took a lot more damage. So, note to self if I'm not maxing the void swarm, 
I can't really use it to jungle clear. Just trying to clear out the wave mid as much as I can. Doesn't mean things are happening top, but we just... We have no real control over the jungle. Even as far ahead as I am right now. So, like, there's... We're, we're just too far out. We have, like, a ward. You know, two wards. And they may have been placed in the process of Lee, like, trying to jump around during that engagement. So, I get a little distracted in chat, admittedly, here. Not watching the minimap. I see them coming. I really see them coming. And I'm just busy chatting up with Lee, and I have to So that's unfortunate, but that's... Well, that's the tilt. I didn't actually tilt this game, which is nice. And I, I am proud of that. Because that was a tilt in the <laughs> But, um... I think that team fighting you know, could have played a little bit better. And as hard as that was, there were, again, opportunities. Yeah, like this, I don't think there's anything to do about that. Um... There were many moments where I probably could have gotten those runes off if I tried a little bit harder for them. I was very accepting that the roams weren't allowed to work. You know, and I shouldn't I shouldn't just accept if I if I know that I'm somebody who has a really strong dank potential, like a Malzahar, I should never just accept that I'm not able to roam. I should try and force that. And I did do that one time bottom, but I didn't really ever try that top. I didn't really, I, I looked a couple times to see if I could kind of go, and there were just some times where I couldn't, like it was poor timing, people were recalling, people were rotating away. It just, it didn't work out. But I needed to be a bit more proactive. And if instead of saying, okay, well, now that I've finally gotten control of the wave, well, let me go ahead and roam, of course that would be ideal. But what I could do instead is just say, hey, you know, I'm just going to surrender this next wave and just really commit to making this roam happen top. And maybe that works, maybe it doesn't, but I only lose one wave for cost of possibly changing the course of that game. And you know, that could have worked out. Especially, again, as Malzahar, who's very strong at ganking. He brings a lot of presence into those ganks immediately. Another thing I could have done better was getting my combos down, right? I think almost every time, if you were paying attention during that replay, you'll notice that when I ulted, I didn't like E-W ult, you know, Q-E-W ult. I just kind of like maybe threw out the silence to start it. And then just walk towards them and ult them. That's not, that's not, that's not how I'm supposed to play Miles. Sometimes I got the Ignite in there too, which is fine, but... It's just, I, I think that was just some rough mechanical play. You know? Um, there's not any one particular thing that jumps out at me about that game. As like, oh, this was the one thing I did wrong. I do think that last team fight, or not the last team fight, but the team fight in mid where we had just lost our outer turret and we were fighting at the inner turret. I think if I had played that a little bit differently and held my ultimate just a little bit longer, we could have got a kill there. But I, I don't think there's anything else about this that really jumps out at me as a one critical thing. Like, oh, I should have been roaming more. I should have used my W to push wave more. I definitely should have used Q to push the wave more because that actually provides decent wave clear and Azir can't really stop that. Like, he can stop the Void Swarm. And like I noted during the replay, we had a lot of mana available a lot of the time. And I need to push myself to make the most out of those abilities, make the most out of those cooldowns. And if I'm just floating extra mana, I'm being inefficient. So I think... What it basically breaks down to is mechanics with Malzahar. Mechanics of shoving the wave more efficiently. Uh, mechanics of getting the combo down properly when I ult somebody. Mechanics in positioning to make sure that 
when I do ult somebody, I can also slam ignite afterwards without breaking positioning. Um, or, uh, most importantly, just understanding intuitively how long the ultimate lasts. So before I try to start moving and bring follow-up damage, which I shouldn't be able to do because I should have all my cooldowns off already and my auto attacks are negligible, I should have a good sense of when that ult ends and be able to just wait it out. If nothing else, I should just wait for the suppression to stop and then move. I should never cancel it myself. These are all just mechanical things with Malzahar. So overall, I think this was just a, a day of learning how to improve our mechanics at Malzahar. And because we're so focused on that, I'm gonna actually go ahead and hop in and play uh, and this was a pretty quick lesson for today. We're gonna hop in. We're gonna play a couple more games of Malzahar exclusively. Um, we're gonna we're gonna queue as both mid and support just to make sure we have decent lanes for him. And we're just gonna play more Malzahar because this needs to be somebody we can bring out. He's a fairly strong pick, I think. Uh, maybe not top tier right now because of some of the changes he's gone through. But he needs to be somebody we can break out in these situations and. You know, if, if the mechanics are the thing that's holding us back, the mechanics are the things we, we should work on fixing. You know, so let's let's get it. Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop in to a couple more games of Miles of Heart to finish out the stream. That is the lesson for today, though. Thank you for watching. I hope, uh, you know, in watching these, you can uh, appreciate in your own play as well. When there's not any glaring errors, what is it that sort of is holding you back? Might just be rough mechanical play, you know. And I think we were still able to identify a couple of key mechanics that we're lagging behind on. And in these games we're going to play, we're going to be very focused mentally on that. Making sure we use our mana efficiently. Making sure we hit our combo properly. Making sure we use our ultimate to its maximum capability. Um, and we're going to make sure that that works out for us. And I think by the end of these next few games, we're going to see some improvement and we'll be able to, in future days, break out Malzahar a bit more confidently. So if you're ever feeling the same way, just hop into a few more games, you know? Do norms if you don't want the pressure of ranked. Practice. Get those mechanics back up to par and you'll be good to go. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next lesson.